Today's program begins with a slightly somber note. Some of you will recall the unfortunate accident at Duke Highway last year that claimed the life of a seven-month-old baby that was thrown out of the SUV of her parents. See, the fact is, in a 50 km per hour collision, a 10 kg baby becomes a 300 kg projectile. And how much did you last carry when you were in the gym? Statistically speaking, uh, the use of child restraints has been shown to reduce infant deaths by as much as 71%. For slightly bigger toddlers, they have been found to reduce uh, death by as much as 54% in passenger cars. Booster seats over there for kids aged 4 to 12 has been found to reduce uh, severe injury risk by as much as 45% compared to just strapping a seatbelt. So to speak more on this topic, uh, I would like to invite Ms. May Wong, a uh, consultant with uh, Child Passenger Safety in Malaysia, to give us a bit more details on this. May, hi, thanks for coming. Hi, nice uh, to be here. Pleasure, pleasure to have you with us on this video. So May, can you tell us, um, tell us more about uh, CPS Malaysia? Right, CPS Malaysia is actually a coalition of various individuals and organisations who are really passionate about child passenger safety. So we are coming up with different programmes and activities to do this so that Malaysian parents can know more about child passenger safety and help to save children's lives. So, for the next part of the video, I'm going to try to install one of these child restraints myself and May is going to watch me do it. So here we have the zero plus size baby seat which consists of a base as well as a detachable carrier. I'm going to install the base first. This base has a stand, has a front facing stand which has to go in front. And these two clips needs to go into the isofix anchors here. As you can see you just need to align. See that the two isofix anchors clip and you, here's, here you are partially secure. Check that the forward leg also supports, also presses down against on the ground of the vehicle. Am I doing alright me? Right, now you need to adjust so that this part is against here. Right, so that would be here? Mm -hmm. And push. Oh, okay, that's where I made the mistake. I, should have, I shouldn't have lowered the, the, the front support so soon, right? Okay. Once it's clicked, right. Is this alright? it's right? locked. Yep. Then you can put the load leg down. Alright. Ah, so that's one mistake that, that parents can make. Right, so now, I put, so now are we okay to put on the... Have you checked that there's a showing green right at the bottom? Yes, it's green. Good. Okay, you can proceed. Alright. So here's the carrier. Right. Right. So, what about this this handle? What's, what am I supposed to do with it? Okay, it's actually in the correct position right now. Yeah. But parents often make the mistake because when they're carrying the baby, mm -hmm. the handle is normally in this position. Right. Okay. So according to the manufacturer's instructions, which is on the base of the seat, right at the bottom, mm -hmm. okay, this handle has to be in front. Okay. Hear the click? Right. right. And it's locked this way. I see. So from what I can see here, it's a relatively simple installation process where um, you have to watch, basically you have to watch everything click into place. That's right. And from what I can see, there are also very clear uh, lab labels and instructions on the seat. So uh, would, it, would it be right for me to say that most parents shouldn't have an excuse of not getting this installation right after maybe two or three tries? I think you could, you're quite right to say that. Mm -hmm. Because not only can you hear the, the audible click, mm -hmm. you also have the visual clue that everything has to show green in all the indicators. So this is one good thing about the isofix system. Yeah. So red means no go. That's right. So May, at what stage do you advise parents to advance from this to something bigger? Right, again you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions. This particular seat can be used rear facing until 13 kilo. So if your child is um, 13 kilo or less, you can still use the seat. The other thing that you need to look at is the, is the height of the child. Mm -hmm. The head of the child must be less than one inch from the top. 
That's right. right. Yeah. At that level. Okay. okay. Once the child's head reaches above that level, he needs to change to a bigger seat. Right. If the legs are too long, it doesn't matter. So if the child is in a seat and um, the legs are touching here, okay, mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not a health or safety problem at all. The main thing is the head. Yeah. So if your seat is dirty, that's absolutely fine, yeah, parents. Nothing is more important than your kid's safety. But so even if let's say we transition them to a bigger seat, they they, they should still be rear facing, correct? Yes, for as long as um, the ma manufacturer's instructions say so. So there are some convertible seats that are only rear facing until 13 kilo. So you use until 13 kilo before you turn it around. Mm -hmm. But there are some convertibles that can actually fit until 18 kilo. Your hand loose. Okay. Other hand. Other hand. Give me your other hand. Okay. And we are done. Very good. Are you comfortable? So what we do to check to see if the strap is tight enough, we pull up here and we try to do a pinch test. If the strap cannot be pinched, that means it is tight enough like this. This is very nice and snug. Just check that. And the strap has to come from shoulder height or below because he's rear facing. Well done. So May, at what stage should parents shift their kids uh, from forward facing child seats to uh, booster seats? Right, it's best practice to actually follow the child seat manufacturer's instructions, mm -hmm. their recommendations. So when they say forward facing until 18 kilograms, that's what you should do. But some children may outgrow in terms of height then they can switch to a booster when they are at least 15 kilograms. I see. Well, she looks well strapped. Well, actually, she's a little bit below weight. She's oh. only 12 kilo. Okay. Right? And uh, some children at this age, they may also try to escape from the seatbelt because this is using the seatbelt only. And you can see that it's actually quite high off the shoulder. So she's a little bit uncomfortable. All right. Sometimes when they're uncomfortable, what they do is they would move their arms out, okay, and sit this way. All right. This is very dangerous because now all the stress is on this area here, and that can cause serious internal injury. So they must always be like this. So for this child, I would not recommend using a booster seat at this time. So parents, remember, do not try this at home. All right, May, it was great to have you with us. Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing all, all your know-how. Um, any parting remarks for our, for our viewers? Sure. Remember, it is your responsibility as a parent to make sure that your child is securely harnessed in an appropriate child restraint. And children learn from adults. So it's up to you to make sure that you are also securely buckled up each and every time. Remember, your child's safety is your priority. That's all the time we have for this video today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. Thank you so much. Bye for now.